After all the JSON parsing, it's time for something easy. We need to create a detailed view controller class so we can draw the partition content in an attractive way. The easiest way to render complex content from the web is nearly always to use a WK web view. And we're going to use the same technique from project four to create a detailed view controller class that contains a web view. So in Xcode, go to the file menu and choose new, then file, or press command N to go straight to the same window. So command N. Choose Cocoa Touch class, then next. Call this thing Detail View Controller, subclassing UI View Controller, then press next and create. Just like in project four, we're going to add an import for WebKit. Here, import WebKit. We're going to add a property for our web view. Var web view is a WK web view. Implicitly unwrapped. Then we'll add a load view method that does web view equals a new WK web view and assigns that to the view of our main view controller. Boom. That's almost the same as the code from project four. But this time we're going to add one extra property. Var detail item is an optional partition. This is going to be passed in from the original view controller, telling it which partition to show on the screen. And that was the easy bit. The hard bit is that we can't just drop the partition text into the web view, because it will probably look tiny. Instead, we need to wrap it in some HTML, which is a whole other language with its own rules and its own complexities. Now this series isn't called Hacking with HTML, so I don't intend to go into much detail here. However, I will say that the HTML we're going to use tells iOS the page fits mobile devices, and that we want the font size to be 150% of the standard font size. All the HTML will be combined with the body value from our petition, then sent to the web view. So down here in view to load. First, we'll make sure we have a detail item. We'll say guard let detail item equals detail item else return. So if we haven't got one, just bail out. Then we'll make a new HTML string. We'll say let HTML equals, and I'm going to use multi-line strings here. So that's three double quotes. Then we've got HTML, head, meta, name equals viewport, content equals, width equals, device width, initial scale equals one. Inside there we'll have a style. We'll do style, uh, the body is going to be, thank you for Xcode indenting for that, get wrong. Uh, what is going to be font size 150%. Come on, let's go work with me here. Uh, then end the style, then indent that again. There we go, Xcode. Uh, then end the head. Then start a body tag. Use string interpolation to bring in the detail item dot body from our petition. End the body, end the HTML. And finally, end the string with three more double quotes. So there's lots going on here. First, we check that detail items actually exist, so one was passed in. Then we make a new long HTML string using string interpolation to place our petition's body, the HTML, the actual message itself, inside the HTML. Now again, I don't wanna go into HTML too much here, but just briefly, this thing here, the head, marks the invisible part of the page, like styling and JavaScript and tags describing how it works to the browser. One of those tags, this meta tag here, is saying this thing should automatically fit the width of our device, scaled in at a regular size, but users can pinch the zoom if they want to. This one here is a style tag saying, make the font size of our body text much, much bigger. Now this body here has no relation to this body here, they're different things. What this is saying is the main text on our body of our page, the document itself, is 150% of the standard, so bigger than average. Now that we have that HTML, we can load it into our web view by saying after the string, web view dot load HTML string, our HTML with no base URL there. Now previously in project four, we loaded URL requests, pages from the internet somewhere. Now we're saying, here's a custom HTML string I've made by hand, please load that. And that's our HTML string here. 
so you can inject any kind of content you want into web views. This base URL parameter is very important and very helpful in some apps because it lets you point to a URL either locally or remote that contains external resources like pictures or style sheets or JavaScript, for example. So that's it for our detailed view controller. It really is that simple. However, we still need to connect this to the table view controller by implementing the did select row at method. Previously, we used the instantiate view controller method to create a view controller from main.storyboard. But in this project, detailed view controller isn't in the storyboard. It's just a free floating class. This makes did select row at easier because you can load the class directly rather than loading the UI from a storyboard. So back in viewcontroller.swift, below self row at, I'll make a new method called did select row at. And I'll say, let VC, a new view controller, be an instance of our detail view controller class directly, no storyboards now. We can then say vc.detail item, the thing it should load, is our petitions array at index path.row, so whichever one they tapped in the table. And finally, navigation controller, question mark dot push view controller, vc animated true, to bring that thing onto the screen. I'll press command R now, or you can click the play button, you should build and run. Again, here are all the different kinds of um, petitions you can see on the screen. Uh, I'll choose one here. You see it slide in, and it says about industrial hemp being part of the crop of the American landscape. Fine, uh, but you can see it's loading the text of that petition nice and clearly on the screen. And you can do it for any one of these things down here. For example, uh, call on the Republic of Cameroon government here. So you can see any petition you like now in detail.